So far, we've statically provisioned every persistent volume. This can become a lot of work for a cluster admin. Thankfully, Kubernetes also supports dynamic provisioning. This is where the cluster automatically creates PVs to fulfill newly created PVCs. That's what we're going to learn about now. The key to dynamic provisioning is the Kubernetes storage class. Here's an example config file. A storage class has three important fields. The first is the provisioner field, which specifies the underlying storage technology. In this example, it's GCE's persistent disk. Next, we have the parameters field. This is where you put provisioner specific parameters. For GCE, you need to specify the storage media type, which could be PD standard or PD SSD. You also need to specify the Google Cloud zone where your cluster lives. Basically, you should reference Kubernetes documentation to determine what the appropriate parameter fields are for the provisioner that you end up using. A storage class also has a reclaim policy. The reason why is because PVs, which are dynamically created using a storage class, will inherit its reclaim policy. Let's step through the dynamic provisioning process. First, the cluster administrator sets up one or more storage provisioners. Next, the admin must create one or more storage classes. Then a user creates a claim. The claim specifies a storage class using the storage class name field. Kubernetes uses that storage class to create a persistent volume and provision the actual storage used by that PV. It's all dynamically provisioned based on the requested capacity, access modes, reclaim policy, and provisioners specified in the PVC and the matching storage class. Now the user may use the claim as a volume. Remember the MySQL deployment example? Well, back when I showed it to you, the DB pod used a volume to store the database. We're going to revisit that example. But this time, we're going to use a PVC in place of a volume. Furthermore, we're going to dynamically provision a PV to store the DB on. And we're going to run this example on GKE. This time, let's start by Googling GKE. Since I'm still logged in from last time, I'm just going to click on View My Console. The next step is to click the Create button. We're going to name it PD Cluster. Set the zone to be US West 1A. Set the cluster version to be the latest. Select the small machine type. And click the Create button. Finally, switch cube control to point to the new cluster. Here's the storage class that we're going to use. I've named it Slow Storage because it uses PD Standard instead of PD SSD. I've set the zone to be the same as the cluster. OK, let's create a storage class and then check out our handiwork. Next, we're going to create this PVC. The PVC uses the slow storage class that we just created. I set it to request 512 megabytes, which is more than enough for the database. So let's create it now. Here's the PVC we just created. And here's the PV that got dynamically created and bound to our PVC. We're done creating all the storage related stuff. Now let's move on to the database deployment. It's exactly the same as the one we saw before, except that it now uses the PVC that we just created instead of a regular volume. Why don't we create the deployment so that we can test it out? To test out the DB, we need to get shell access to the DB container. Then we've got to start up the MySQL client, create a drinks DB with a beers table, and insert a couple of beers. Here's the contents of the database. In other words, everything works. The upside is that we don't have to manually pre-allocate storage on the cloud like we did in the regular old volume example. 